live. Yay, hello. Sorry, I had a little bit of trouble there connecting to the Wi-Fi. Hopefully my Wi-Fi is going to be okay today. How are you all? It's lovely to see you. Okay, I'm just getting my notes up on the screen. So hopefully everyone's starting to navigate their way around. Hi, Hannah. Lovely to see you. Um, so today I'm going to do a Q&A session and just talk briefly about what's going on inside the group and what's coming up next. And it's been lovely to see you all supporting each other inside the community and helping each other. And I've got to give a big, massive thank you also to all the older members um, who, you know, have been checking in with the newer members and helping out. So thank you so much, because that's why this community works, because of everyone being so kind and giving. And um, so I just want to say thank you for that. Um, hi, everyone. Sheena, hello. Angela, hi. Stella, Stacy, hello. Annette, hi, Katie. Um, Paula, hello. You're over at the Hub watching. Hi. Linda from Italy. Hi, Linda. Uh, there's some people I can't see your name and it just means you need to press the button at the top and it gives me permission. Ida, hello. Katrina, hi. Lovely to have you all here. Let me know in the comments how you're getting on and if you have any questions. So I've put a poll into the group this week. One poll is to check what stage you're at. So that's using the roadmap. And, you know, I wouldn't get too hung up on the label or what it means and you know how I've heard some people say that they felt like they were further along and now they don't feel like they are as far along but you know at the end of the day that roadmap is to help you focus on the next steps so it doesn't matter which stage you're at really it's just to help you lay those foundations and focus on the next right things so um, Glenn made a great point you know he is a professional artist now he's selling uh, he makes art for other people, um, but he wants to go back to the beginning. So in a sense, he's going back to the beginning. So he's not a beginner necessarily, but he's going back to the beginning stage of rewriting the path. And this can happen, you know. You might end up going down that roadmap and like Glenn, realizing that you want a different direction and you do come back to the beginning and get all the foundations back together again. So I thought that was an, an, an interesting point. Um, but it, again, every road and path is different for everyone. For some people on the roadmap, you might be happy to just get to stage three and that feels comfortable and that's okay. Some people are really focused on what they want to do and want to get to, you know, the end of the roadmap and stay there. And again, that's okay. So it just is all about you focusing on your own journey and looking at the roadmap and deciding what the next steps are. In fact, I had a meeting yesterday with Andrew, who does all the tech, and he's starting to do all the tech now from now, which is great. Um, and we start to look at the roadmap and how that will look inside the hub. So you'll be able to start clicking soon and have your journey actually inside the hub membership area. So that's going to be amazing. I don't know when that's coming because we um we have a lot of things to do behind the scenes to get that going but i'm really excited because i know that will help once you've got that roadmap inside and you can actually check things off as you're going along and see the progress that you're making so that's coming and then the other poll inside the group and if you've missed these by the way they're all in the announcements section so if you go into the facebook community then you'll see announcements at the top and all the latest posts are up there and you'll find the polls in there. And the other poll was, what kind of art do you make? And so this is really nice for us to know and for you to know as well, what we are working on in the background is a directory that will go inside the hub. And the reason we've asked for those categories is so that we can start to create the categories inside the hub. So you'll be able to create your own directory profile and you'll be able to say what country you're from or location and you'll be able to say what kind of artist you are as well and then the aim then is for you to be able to search for the people inside the hub and make friends and connections and 
you know, I've got this t-shirt on again, better together, but we really are better together. And the more you can get to know people in your local area or um, who are maybe making art the same as you, because there's a place for everyone, you know, if you get over that fear of, oh my gosh, they're doing the same as me and maybe we can't talk. It's actually better to make your friends with people that are making the same kind of art as you. So, you know, Sharon does this in her in her world of ceramics. She's made lots of connections with people and, you know, in her local area, but globally as well, because we've got this amazing global community inside here. And what happens is, you know, you add a few people to your network and especially when we're in a group like this, where we come from a place of sharing and being kind and supporting each other. You know, Sharon has this in her network where other ceramicist artists will tell her about opportunities and they all help each other. And that's how we get through all of this with other people supporting us and giving us tips. And so they're the two polls inside the group. And then I've just put a post, which again is in the announcement section. And I have just sent an email to you all with the link so you can click that link from the email and it will take you to, to the post where you can get some feedback from me. I really want to make sure that everyone gets a little chance to um, get some feedback from me. It, we have a lot of members, so it's gonna take me a while to get through them all, but I will. And please on that post, keep it tight. So if you've got a question, try and keep it as short as possible because I won't have time to read reams and reams of text, although I would love to, I do love reading you know the deeper stories behind everything but i need to be able to get to everyone so if you could keep it to a couple of paragraphs the question and you can also let me know your next three steps if you want to make sure you're on the right path and i can advise you um so that's inside the group and you don't have to remember all of this because tomorrow i'll send you a highlights email so if you feel like, oh my gosh, there's been so much going on, I don't know if I've missed anything, I don't know what to focus on, just remember that there's lots of things going on, the lives, but you don't need to get involved in all the live videos. Really, these are for extra support, extra help, and everything is recorded, so if you need to watch the replays, you can. Everything goes inside the hub. But the main thing to focus on is the seven keys and working through that and looking at the roadmap and just circling those next three steps. And for you, your next three steps might be to learn more about the hub, um, maybe to work through the content, maybe you're making that your focus. So the other thing I wanted to mention, as you are working through this process, a few people have said this, that when you start to look at the seven keys, and I was speaking to Sonia about this yesterday from a different angle. She's thinking about the art making process on a deep level. And she did a course this year and it was all about how to strengthen your visual language and really paying attention and critiquing the process of contrast and the design elements such as um, some people, if you're beginners watching this, might know, not know what I'm talking about. That's okay, don't worry. But it's about the formal elements that make up art, which is your, you know, the tone and the form and the contrast and the way you use those elements to describe your art and to, to communicate what you're seeing and feeling. And so what she found was that was stifling her creativity. And I think Gemma shared me a link, and I wish that I could explain this properly. But in a simplified version, this is my version. You know, when we're looking at the seven keys or critiquing our art in that way, it becomes more about the left side of the brain. Or it's a different part of the brain anyway, the logical part of the brain, the brain that is breaking things down and comparing and thinking. And the seven keys is using that part of the brain where we stop and we're asking questions and we're thinking and we're searching for answers. And that can sometimes, this is normal, I just want to say, it can for a moment block your creativity because you're using another part of the brain that, you know, the creative flow and when we're in that, you know, way of making and it's easy, it's a completely different part of the brain that's working. 
And so just wanted to highlight that, that that's normal. And it doesn't mean that forever now, whenever you work on the seven keys, you'll never be able to create art. I think it's just that process. And also, just like I was saying to Sonia yesterday, just because you're, she's starting to now think about the formal elements more, it doesn't mean that that will block her creativity forever either. It's just learning how to jump from the, the one to the other, and it's possible. And it might be that you just park that for now and then jump back into being creative. And there's ways that you can get that going again by um, triggering the brain to being creative and jumping back into the why. And I find that the seven keys do, by default, get you excited about your art again when you start to go through the why and the cycle. So just wanted to point that out, that that's normal. Um, and it will come back. <laughs> And we'll help you get that creativity back again. So it's just because you're using this different part of the brain. But what will happen in the long run um, is the more you learn about the seven keys and the formal elements of art, which just come naturally over time, we'll cover all of this in good time. What you start to do is you make the decisions without thinking so much about it. So it is a lot to think about at the beginning and it just gets easier and easier and you'll start to make the decisions without having to go through all the worksheets inside the hub. Um, you know, the first few goes, you probably will have to go through the worksheets every time you need to revisit a key. But over time, you will just start making decisions based on your who, based on the how, based on the what without having to dig through all the lessons again. So it just gets easier and easier and easier, just like with making art. You know, the first time you've got to think about all these things and there's the color palette and there's how you make it have more depth. And it's all so much to think about. And then as you start to learn your language, your artistic language, you just, they're second nature. You mix the color without even thinking and you, you um, learn the way you like you like to describe the shape of something or you learn how to create that depth you learn the, the tips and the tricks and they just become second nature so it's all practice 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 so um and one thing i just want to say um so that's covered off that the other question that i've seen cropping up a lot which has given me an idea to create a lesson for is people are asking about websites and I've seen this coming up a lot inside the community over the last week so what I'm going to do is create a lesson on websites giving you an overview and there are two parts to a website there's the information part of a website so it's the about page and maybe a gallery page and contact me page and your home page and then there's the selling part the commerce side of a website so there's two parts of that website i'm going to cover the first part next week and give you some tips on how to get going with a website and then next month we are going to focus on selling and there will be some extra lessons to help you with selling and how to do that authentically without feeling sleazy and then what I will also do is include a lesson on selling through your website and selling through social media. So that will be coming next month. So for now, I'll just break down the, the steps of a website and your options because quite often at the beginning, you don't need all the bells and whistles straight away. It's growing into things rather than going into things. And uh, my advice, and I'll quickly just say this in a nutshell now, and I'll do this properly in a lesson that will go inside the hub next week, is at the beginning, use whatever's easiest and simplest. Especially if you are still finding your voice and working on what your portfolio is, and maybe things need to be changed. Um, you know, if you're in that beginning stage, then... I would keep it as simple as possible and use a website that is a drag and drop that you don't have to have a developer for, that you can really pull together as quickly as possible. 
that there are downsides to those kinds of websites, but at the beginning, there's lots of upsides and you can change it in the future. And then as you become more established and you are confident in the work that you're putting out there and you're confident about your who and your messaging, and um, then you can change your website to being something that's more flexible in terms of altering it and um, making it feel more like your voice and changing colors and all those things. So that's what I would advise and keep just keep it really simple. Don't get bogged down at the beginning. And so, you know, as long as you have somewhere to take people to a website that explains more about yourself and your artwork, that's enough to get going. And so then you can focus on all the important things like your voice and developing your work and then review your website again in six months or a year. So also I will, just press the button by accident. Um, in terms of selling, because this is a question I keep seeing, and it's like this elusive, how do you sell on social media? So in a nutshell, again, there'll be a lesson coming on this to go in more detail. But, you know, on social media, again, you can keep things really simple in the beginning. Sharon and selling on social media comes from building relationships. You know, it's very unusual for someone to impulsively just say, I want to buy your art now. You know, it comes from sharing posts, having a conversation. It is said, you'll hear me say this a lot, that people need to act, interact seven times before they make a purchase. And on social media, this is true. People like to get to know you before they make a decision, especially for higher ticket priced artworks. And so what generally happens is it comes from you sharing and sharing the why and your work in progress and this is happening. By the way, I've got this artwork for sale. Here's the price. If you are interested, let me know. Um, so at the beginning, it can be something conversational like that. And the more then your audience do get to know you, and this is why showing up on social media is important because they will get to know you. This is the power of social media. It, helps build relationships the whole world word social is about that it's about people being able to trust you and you show up and they click with you in some way and connect with you and your artwork and through your posts you can reassure people that it's safe to buy and this is how I work and this is how it would happen and there's a whole lesson on this inside the hub already in the bonus area about social media but then what can happen is people will inevitably then say, yes, I'm interested and, in, in, you know, or how much is your work? And so you can keep it really simple at the beginning and just have a PayPal link. So if people are interested, you just send them the PayPal link after the conversation, of course, and they confirm they want to buy. You know, you can just say, yeah, if you transfer the money here, um, explain the process, your payment will be processed and then I'll take your details and get the work shipped to you and you can keep it really simple like that so you don't need all the carts and all the bells and whistles to begin with and in fact Sharon Griffin who has created the deep dive lesson inside the hub about how she sold I think she's up to 20,000 pounds worth of art now over lockdown selling online and not all of that came from Instagram but a big majority of that did um, some of it came from galleries selling on their website online. They had like an exhibition. I think at least probably 10,000 of that. Anyway, it doesn't matter, does it, what amount it was. The fact is there was a lot of a lot of sales that just came from just sending the link to people. Um, she doesn't have a cart on her website, nowhere for people to buy. And as long as you make that clear that, I, I think putting that on your social media that, you know, my work is for sale, please send me a message if you're interested putting that on your posts and giving more information so that your posts are opening up conversation rather than just saying the work is for sale, here it is. It's about building those relationships. So you can simply just have that link. And then as you get going, you can then look into having the link embedded into your website so people can actually buy and having a cart yourself. Um, there are ways, and I'm not sure, I've never done this before, but on Insta in Facebook, 
Um, you can put the prices on posts and things like that. But I, mean, I don't actually have any experience in that, so I wouldn't be able to help you with that. I might try and find someone who knows and see if they can come in. But there's a way there. But simply by just building relationships and having the conversation is the best way to start. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up as well. Um, and now I'm just going to check. Um, and it's about, sorry, before I move on, it is about building up and starting there. And, you know, Sharon has said to me now, you know, she's had so many orders come in that way that she does want to start automating it now because she has so many people messaging her that it's become, you know, it, it becomes a point where actually this is becoming a bit of a big job now. So I want to make it more automated. And how do I do that? And I'll just have a button and I'll go to the website and pay and it it's all comes through. But it's almost growing into that before you um, keeping it as simple as possible. I think what I'm trying to say here is recognizing what you're comfortable with. And if all the tech overwhelms you, just keep it simple. Create a link and send that to people. You know, don't overwhelm yourself with the tech if it is too overwhelming. Grow into it when you need it. Alternatively, though, if you do feel comfortable with the tech and you want to, you know, have the professional side set up and you don't want the headache of sending the link and you'd rather have it on your website, then absolutely go for it now. It's just, I guess what I'm saying is recognize what you're comfortable with and set it up like that. Whatever's simplest for you. Some people can just set up websites like that with and, and do all the tech. So um, it depends what your background is, but you don't have to get overwhelmed with the tech. So, ooh, oh, and exciting news as well. I'm going to be working on Ronelle's um, deep dive session. So she's going to share how she got her $10,000 grant, which is sitting in my inbox. I'm going to turn that into a lesson today. <laughs> it's so exciting and you don't again have to do that yet it's there when you need it inside of the hub um all right let me check the lovely comments and see if there's any questions from you hi helen lovely to have you here saha hello isabel hello hi jane nice to see you jackie hello freddie happy thursday yes and hello i'm just loving the energy in the group i get so excited and the other thing now I just wanted to say as well, because we are growing, I can actually get more guest experts to come in and do talks because the guests that we feature, um, you know, they usually come in because they want to raise their profile. They want to get visible in front of people. And so, um, you know, having a bigger group helps us get guest experts in to do talks and things like that. So that's exciting. And I'll be reaching out to some people that I've had on my radar for a while. Hi, Kelly, lovely to see you. Hi, Sue from Cape Town. Deborah, Michelle, hello, you made one of my lives. Hello, hello. Ah, Marita, hi. <laughs> oh, Stourbridge, hello from Stourbridge. Not far from me, Montreal, hello. Leeds, is it sunny up there? It's really cloudy here. Minnie, hello. I've been in the hub for 18 months or so. If anyone lives near me in Northampton, I'm happy to group up with you. That's lovely. I think what we'll do, Minnie, um, is we're going to start putting people into groups um, next towards the end of next month because we just want everyone to settle first and realise what stage they're at and be comfortable with that. And then we'll start to put people into groups either in terms of location or stage um, but what we were talking about is encouraging people to meet up, which is why we're creating the directory, because we will help pull you together in terms of location. So you can have member meetups. We used to have member meetups before the lockdown happened. So we will help as much as we can to identify the location of you all and then help you create your own little hub meetups, because it is really important to do that and meet up with people. I know it's a bit strange at the moment and we can't possibly meet up. I don't know. The situations are so different everywhere, aren't they? Um, and it is a bit crazy. But we've got some ideas behind the scenes as, as well of, of doing some Zoom chats and putting you into little groups as well. So, um, you know, that's one thing that we are passionate about is helping you connect with each other and this community. 
Um, so we are working on that behind the scenes, but I think it's a great idea. And if you do end up organizing a meetup, what we were thinking is if, if like there's one person from each location who wants to arrange a meetup, then we can put it on the highlights email and let everyone know, and then they can come and join you if they live in that area. So it's a great idea, Minnie. And yeah, I just want to say as well, the highlights email will be sent tomorrow. And so don't worry about if you've fallen behind or I don't know if I've caught this and I don't remember where this was, because I will send you the links in an email of all the important things that happened in the week. But reiterating again that you don't have to go through all of the live trainings. It's just there if you need it um, because it's a work at your own pace. So, But the highlights email will have everything written down for you with all the links so you can save that if you want to go back over things. So hi, Charlie. Hi, Kath. Hello, Flurry. In I can't say that word. Thoroughly. I really struggle saying that word for some reason. Enjoy There's some words I can't say. It's really funny. <laughs> um, enjoy the mindset lessons. Inspirational. Just need to paint my dreams now. Going to be a big um, giant image. I dreamt large. Are you able to guide us a bit more for the calendar? I can't see the rest of that message. I don't know what that means for the calendar. Um, are you going to guide us a bit more for the calendar? Tell me just that last little bit, Joel, and I can look at that because I don't see the rest of the message. It, for some reason, only shows me so much of the message. Um, is the 2020 worksheet the roadmap? And do and we do alongside with the seven keys or after? So the what the, there is inside the hub is the roadmap is basically the stages that people are at so beginner hobbyist and the action steps to take you through to the next level and so that's like a linear path that you're progressing through when you go to the next stage the seven keys works alongside that and that's your basically it's your plan your business plan of being an artist and turning it into a living and it's an ever evolving process. So think of the roadmap as the the journey in a linear way, and the seven keys is the the plan of how you're going to do it. And you're constantly going over the seven keys time and time and time again as you learn more about your who and your people and your voice. Hopefully that makes sense. And then the 2020 worksheet that is for getting organized. It's the seventh ingredient, the action. So the seventh ingredient action is all about focusing on the right things so you don't get overwhelmed, focusing on the next steps. And we have a mid-year review inside the hub, which is quite chunky. You don't have to do the whole thing, but that is about getting organized. And there are 2020 worksheets in there to help you plan for the next few months and help you create daily habits and weekly habits. So, um, but if you're new to all of this, you know, my advice is to, to work through the seven keys and look at the roadmap and then just to print a calendar out for the next month and start to plan what you'd like to get done. And I will write this up in the, in the highlights email tomorrow. Hopefully that helped. and building her website wonderful i mean there is lots of advice and support inside the group and um, lots of people have created their own websites in fact i will put an, another <coughs> message out excuse me um because i there are lots and lots of different sites for building websites now and i'm a little bit out of touch because i build all mine through wordpress um, and it's been a long time. The site that I used when I was first an artist, which was fantastic, has actually closed down now, which is a shame. But there are lots and lots of sites. So we will compile a list of ones for you to look into. And it is a case of just choosing one that you're comfortable with. Lots of people saying they need help with websites. Um, yeah, there's a branding lesson inside the hub right now, inside the how 
it's all about how you write about your work, having your mission, your tagline, your bio and your statement. So that might help you now. I'm just about to pull that out and put it into the bonus masterclass lesson, but at the moment it's sat inside the how, inside the seven keys. Everyone's saying the website lesson will be helpful. That is good to know. I've started with WordPress. Are they any good for beginners? Well, I think it just depends on the type of person you are because, you know, there are some people that find WordPress really easy and simple, and then some people it just confuses them. I use WordPress, and I have to say it took me a long time to get my head around how it worked. I found it, because I have ADHD dyslexia, I found it quite overwhelming to begin with. There was loads of menus down the side, and I was, Ooh. But now I've, I know, understand which menus I need to work with. And there's lots of tutorials. Can be a bit of a learning curve at the beginning, but um, I, I like it. So <laughs> I'm too impatient. I want the site now. And the thing is, if you feel that way, I was like that. And what I did is... I wish this platform was still in existence, verb.com. There's no point searching it because it's closed down. But that site was where I started as an artist. I literally found, because I did not want to pay a developer, I was skint. I didn't have any time. So my my, my focus was find the cheapest, easiest um, website builder possible. And I found Verb, and it cost me £6 a month. And it was a drag and drop, very limited. You couldn't redesign the pages. You just literally dropped your images in. My site looked amazing. <laughs> and I made it in three hours because I just dropped all the images in and put my bio and my statement and it had my images there. And that was enough for me to get going. And I created my business cards and I, I got it all going within probably a week. Um, there were massive limitations. You know, I couldn't sell from that site and I couldn't, um, change things around, move things, but I got it going and my, my card looked really great. And I got those with moo.com, which are brilliant. I love moo. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're really good quality and really good service. So they're my preferred business cards. I know some people use other, other companies, but I just think just always check the weight of the cards because you need a nice, weight in a business card in my opinion um so yeah i got going really quickly and that's why i'm, I'm i think you can do that <clears throat> <coughs> and then change in the future and i still sold all my work you know back then didn't sell it through my site i sold it through finding people that could sell it for me and but having that website there was did me a massive favor and having the cards there because it just made my whole art practice look really professional and and people obviously wanted to learn more about me so they could go and look there. So, hi Susie, is tuning in from Scotland, hello. Thank you Kelly for putting Sharon, yeah, Sharon Griffin Art, that's the one. Kath says, I've been in the hub for a few years and did a website first, but it's no longer active. So I'm revisiting the whole web thingy again. I'm enjoying Instagram at the moment and getting nearly 400 followers. Yay, well done, Kath. It's through engaging with other artists and I'm going back to basics now. Yay, we sometimes, I always have to go back to basics. Kelly says, I can swear by Squarespace for website build. I have linked a PayPal business account to it too. You lose a small percentage on each sale, but it's easy to buy on a site uh, yeah and so I think it's worth it plus people can use it with a credit card without a PayPal account that's amazing and I think yeah just you do have to take the hit sometimes you know when we have to give the commission to people or companies like that it is weighing up the convenience and sometimes you know I've deliberated over PayPal and accepting that for hub payments because it causes me a big pain in the butt to be honest because <laughs> For many reasons behind the scenes and an admin level if people cancel their recurring payments it cancels people off the system automatically um you know it's not sophisticated enough to say well people have still got days remaining um it just triggers a cancellation and there's nothing i can do about it it's the way paypal works they take a high commission 
But then, like Kelly said, you know, sometimes um, it's the convenience and people have PayPal, so it can actually lead to more sales for the price of that commission. So it's always weighing up that, you know, versus the headache and whether it's worth it. So, but yeah, keeping it simple. And Squarespace, I've heard great things about Squarespace. Um, so maybe we could share your site, Kelly, as an example. Um, I'm just thinking maybe if I could use your site as an example when I do the lessons, which will be when we come to selling um, next month. Oh, Jackie sold £4,000 worth of art on Instagram using the hashtag artist support pledge. Incredible. Well done, you. Hello from Huddersfield. Yeah, PayPal is a safe way, and net most people like PayPal because of that reason, the safety, and you know your money is secure. And um, sorry, the messages just jumped down, and I can't. I hate it when it does that. Now I have to go back up again. Sorry, just bear with me. It just jumped right down and here we go. I'm back. To, I'm back now. Um, it's frustrating there is a two hundred pound limit. What's the two hundred pound limit on? You know. Good morning, Sinead. Hello. Oh, Yvonne's on holiday. Happy holidays, Yvonne. Where, where have you gone? Bipple, hello. Nice to see you. Good morning, Leslie. Got my days modelled, so I'm arting this morning whilst listening. Yeah, I'm doing a studio session tomorrow, um, which is just me in my art room um, <laughs> playing around because I don't really make art anymore. So <laughs> it's always funny. I'm always like ah, getting angry. <laughs> <laughs> but I will talk about finding your voice. I love the group. I've been put in very useful. Yeah, the support groups are amazing. Uh, member meetups sound great. I'm just inside North Wales, not far from Chester. So we can start, yeah, putting people in, into groups. Yes. Um, Jennifer Stockholm, lovely. We've already created our Croatia group. Right, Ida, I need to speak to you then. And... Um, and put that on the highlights email for tomorrow to say there's a Croatia group forming. Um, and then if we could have like, maybe we'll have to think about how this could work. And so we can point people back to the post. So if anyone else is in Croatia, maybe they've missed that, then if we could link them back to a post inside the hub. And I, I just need to think about how this will work. And then they can join your group. Are there any wood carvers in the hub? Well, Who's asking me this? Because I was chatting with Anne Marie yesterday, who was a wood carver. So I don't know if that's you asking, but inside the hub, I've put a poll to ask what kind of artist you are. So feel free to add wood carver onto that poll. It's in the announcement section, and then we'll point anyone else who carves wood into that direction, and you can meet up. Katrina's in breezy and cloudy Blackpool. It's breezy here. Oz, hello from cloudy South London. It is my dyslexia, Jackie, you're right. <laughs> I'm really terrible with names, um, pronouncing names, so please forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong and do tell me. And certain words, yeah. In fact, to think that I do this now, reading comments off a screen, years ago, I used to have panic attacks, literally really bad panic attacks of having to read things in out loud. I can't believe I do what I do now because I used to be scared of reading books, especially children's books, because I was always scared that I wouldn't be able to pronounce the words or names and I'd make myself look silly. I used to be scared to read anything. I had a massive, massive phobia of reading. Um, and to think now, if someone said to me, you'd be sat here reading out names and um, comments and words, I've just learned to accept it now, I think, and just laugh at myself, which is nice. And that's on the Wirral. Um, Karina has a question. Let me read this. Uh, 
I have a question. If you are creating a collection and someone wants to buy a piece early on, is it a good idea to say it's not available yet? I have done a self-portrait that I think might be key to my voice, so I'm reluctant to let it go. Any advice? Oh, we get this question a lot. In fact, this needs to go in the FAQ. We're, we're creating an FAQ area soon, and this is one that gets asked a lot. And I think, oh, it, it's a difficult one, and I think it depends on what your objectives are at the moment. So if your objectives are to create a body of work because you want to exhibit somewhere or you want to create a collection um, that is for a purpose, you know, it maybe it's to go on your website and you want to approach a gallery and you want that collection of work, then maybe you could say that, um, you know, it's not available right now um, because it's going into this exhibition or it's going towards this but I always like to have an option, you know, to give people, but I can do this. I can create another version for you and it could be a commission or I can take a deposit and I could reserve this piece for you, but I wouldn't be able to send it to you until so-and-so date. You know, always having something um, to give them options. And so, or... You know, if your priority at the moment is actually I need some cash, then I would be inclined to sell it and say, well, it was actually going towards a collection, but um, happy to um, to sell it now. And, you know, if you're positioned to make another piece, then that's how I would work it. So. Hopefully that helps. And if anyone else has advice please chip in and help Karina. Yeah, like Marita said, could you sell a print of your work? So that's another option. It's coming up with the options, alternatives for people. I think always thinking, if I can't let this go now, what can I offer people instead? And it could be a commission, another piece. I can com You can commission me to make something like this. It could be I'll, um, you know, could sell the print because the original is going somewhere else. Or, yeah, look, think of the options and come into the group if you need to come up with ideas. I'm gone through the mindset lessons, but I think I need to go through it again and again. Oh, yes, I think I'm stuck with where to start as I have learned many types and don't know what to do. Do you mean in terms of your art and knowing where to start? Because if it is in relation to your art, then first of all, mindset, yes. We, you will go through mindset for the rest of your life every single day. I work on my mindset every day and it's something that you are continuously working on. That's the one key that I think is always in the background going. And Every time you go to a new level or a new challenge it happens or if someone says something negative or, you know, you come back to the mindset. Every time you feel like you're having a wobble, you feel like you, do, you can't do this or you don't know what direction to go in, all related to mindset. And so you will keep going over that again and again. And we do that inside the hub to remind you. And in terms of going stuck with where to start, if this is in relation to your art, in the studio session tomorrow, I will be talking about this. What I might do is just edit some of the video tomorrow um, because it's two hours long because we just make art. I might just slice out this part and, and send it to you. But basically your starting point with art, it goes back to the why. And it's having that word, I don't know where to start. Having a starting point is crucial. And what I like to do, and everyone works different, and I'll be sharing this tomorrow, is I like to brain dump everything out of my mind, everything that I like, textures, colors. What am I interested in? Subject matter. I look at my old work. What did I like about that work? And I get it all out of my head. You know, getting it out helps you be able to see the big picture rather than trying to question inside the brain. And then what I do from that is, create a little mini project it's the starting point and this is what we teach in make your mark but unfortunately that's not available right now <laughs> but what then happens is you take a starting point and 
It could be a word, it could be an image. Take your mind map and circle one thing or three things. I like to work in three, but you know, for the purposes of, of this, having a starting point, take one thing. It could be a quote, a poem, an image, a name, anything. Take that one thing, get a sketchbook and start a project. Take that one thing, put your big mind map on the wall in wherever you work with all your ideas. And then let that starting point take you on a journey. What I then like to do is go and find four artists that I like the work, I like what they're doing, and I print their pictures out and I stick them in my sketchbook. And then I take that word or the starting point, whatever it is, the image, and I let it take me on a journey. I, I sketch it, I start to read books related to the word. And what happens is you start this project and it becomes your starting point and you play and it's not about an end piece, it's about taking other artists' artwork and seeing what they're doing. Why do I like that? What is it about that artwork? And then I replicate what it is. Is it the colors that I like or is it that, I don't know, it could be anything, the shapes that they've used and I start to play with those shapes. And then as you go on this little journey, then I keep looking back at my mind map all the time, looking for links because sometimes things feel all over the place, but they're often connected to our why and we start to make connections. So hopefully that helps. That's what I'm gonna be talking about tomorrow in the studio session is that starting point. Um, oh, a lovely comment. Great to hear your bubbly voice this morning. I'm normally really chatty and upbeat, but lost my mum a few weeks ago. So suddenly I've gone kind of quiet. Oh, I'm sending you a big, big hub hug. You are brilliant. I'm listening and learning and enjoying the roadmap and next steps getting the hang of brain dumping. Oh, sending you a big, big hug. Oh, Mark, you're in Albury near Birmingham. That's where I was born. I was born in Sandwell Hospital. <laughs> and in fact, all of my family still live that way in Albury. Um, yeah, um, all over that area. So, ha, isn't it funny? Oh, I've won. I was asked if I could sell, if I would sell a recent piece. Also, and didn't because of this. This is another thing, um, is next month, when we're focusing on selling, that's one thing we will look at is pricing. Because to sell, you need to price. So, you know, in the first week, August is going to be focused on selling. And in the first week, it will be looking at your pricing to make sure that you feel comf confident with your pricing. And so also for current members, reviewing your pricing, is it time to itch your prices up by 10, 15%? Um, that's the things we'll, we'll be looking at next month. Um, Jane's asking, when are you reviewing our websites? Next week. So next week I'll, I'll be doing the, um, now this is the website reviews is only available to the older members. You will have opportunities going forward to have things reviewed by me. But um, this one was, I had submissions last month. So I'll be tying it in with the website lesson that's coming out next week and the website reviews will be next Thursday. Uh, where exactly is the place you were going to put all the forms, roadmaps and others? So the roadmap at the moment is inside the hub group and tomorrow, I will be adding the, the resource button inside the hub. We'll have copies of the roadmap, the seven keys, all the things that you can print out. Um, the reason it's a little bit delayed is because we've just sat, I had a meeting with Andrew yesterday and it turns out that I need to start categorizing all the content. This is a bit boring now, but we want to create search features inside the hub so you can search for things. And to do that, I thought you could just search and just put in text, but apparently you can't. You've got to tag things in the, behind the scenes. So we are just going through the process at the moment of tagging all the content inside the hub. And then anything that I put in future needs to be tagged. So we're just working on that tagging system. So that resource section will start to be um, active from tomorrow or from the weekend. Um, but for now, you can find the roadmap inside the, the hub group. Um, I will send a link to that, but it's also in the poll section. 
in the announcements as well, a link to the roadmap. Someone's written here, getting organized now with my calendar, worksheets, notebook, experimenting with my art to find my own unique style. Yay, that's so good. Yeah, Wix is good. I mean, there are upsides and downsides to everything. You know, WordPress is great for some things and it's not great for others. Uh, Wix is great for some things and not good for others. And I just think, you know, in all of this, there are limitations and downsides to everything. Um, and so, oh yes, this leads me to a great point about search engine optimization. Um, you know, some sites like Verb that I used would never come up in the search engine. Um, but I think sometimes we have to weigh up whether that is really, really important to you as an artist, because in today's world, actually, although the Google search engine is great, um, it's great maybe if you're selling giftable things, because you've got to think about what people are searching for. And not many people are searching for, I'd like to buy a, um, a portrait. You know, it doesn't come from a Google search usually. That comes from friends talking to each other saying, I'd like to have a portrait, and on social media. So it's really thinking about whether the Google search um, is is worth the time and the effort. It's, it's you know it, it does take a lot of time and effort to um, make your site ready for optimization. Um, and wondering whether you need that at the beginning. So I, I just mentioned that because I saw some people talking about that. So again, I think it's something that you grow into. But equally, some people might be totally geek tech wizards and know how to do all the search engine optimization and happy to run from that from the beginning. So, um, but yeah, Wix is good. It won't, Wix doesn't always come up in the search engine. Um, WordPress is best for that. But like I say, sometimes it's, you know, there are ways around that blogging and things like that. So I just think, yes, choose the platform that you're most comfortable with. And Wix is great because it's easy to build. I built a website recently. It was a birthday page for someone and quickly put it together and it actually looked really good and that took me a few hours to do. So I think that it is about finding what works for you. Yes, yeah, sorry, Charlie, the roadmap, I will email you all the roadmap tomorrow. Um, but like I say, for now, you can find it in the files section of this group, of the Facebook group. But I will put a link here so you don't have to go looking for it. Oh, Jennifer just lost her mum too. And feel free to chat me if you, if you want. That's so lovely, Jennifer. And we're sending you a hub hug as well. <laughs> yeah, the resource section, it, it, the button doesn't work yet because it's it was new. I only added that button, I think, three weeks ago <laughs> with the intention of putting something in there immediately, but then learning that I can't just put stuff in there apparently. So <laughs> um, we've got to work on all this tagging. But yes, eventually the resource section will have all these printables and the roadmap. And eventually the roadmap will be built inside the hub as well, which will be good. So those buttons at the top, you'll be able to press them. But I've put them at the top so you can see them. Um, Leslie says, I have a Wix website. It took me a while to get set up. And there's some at some point, I'd love feedback. I'm not sure whether or not to sell from there because of the size of my work and the cost of shipping. Um, Yeah, ask inside the group, Leslie, but I think, you know, you can give it a go. This is something else we need to cover as well, is shipping. Um, simple, small was better for me, says Michelle, yes. Can you suggest any WordPress templates for artists? I will do that and look into that ready for the lesson next week. Um, what weight is good for the business cards? I can't remember off the top of my head, but the Moo one, the standard one, is a really good weight card. Um, I'll come back to that and, and ask and, and reply 
in the comments afterwards. Oh, great advice here. I have a free page with Wix, but the paid option was too much for me. So I followed a piece of advice on the hub and bought a domain and hosting with Namecheap. I paid about £65 for a two year plan and they have WordPress templates. That's good to know. Thank you for sharing that. I will make a note of that. Wix is very intuitive. Yeah, um, Kelly has the standard me ones. It's just the standard ones and they are really, really nice. nice. Yeah. I can't remember the weight, Kelly, can you? I can't remember, but it's a nice one. Oh, hi, Angie. Um, Facebook user comes up because of the permissions, GDPR, it protects your personal data in a Facebook group. So to see your name, it's because I use a third party app to do the live stream. Um, you have to press a link that's in the comments above and it gives permission for me to be able to see your name. Hi, Richard. I also put work on Redbubble that gives me small royalties for applications. Yeah, I like Redbubble. We're, we're going to use those soon. Uh, Mini use Weebly, which is great. Um, but the images can take a while to upload. I wonder, Mini, um, could you compress them first? There's a app, free app called tinypng.com or tinyjpeg, J, oh God, I can't do the, <laughs> JPG, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> you know what I mean. Tinypng, tinyjpeg.com and you upload the images and it will compress them into a really small image without losing quality, which is which is good. And then it won't take so long to upload them. Uh, yeah, so um, Annette uses WordPress Elementor. I use Divi, I love Divi, but yeah, having a builder will help with WordPress. So do you engage with people who just like you on Instagram, on Facebook and how? Uh, Michelle, I highly recommend going to do the social media lessons inside the hub because in there I explain how to use social media from beginning to end and how to build relationships and how to do power hours. It's like a big um, lesson where I break it all down for you in 20 minute blocks. So I would do that. Um, if people are looking for the roadmap, I've just seen Helen say you're looking for the roadmap. I'll put the link in afterwards. It's it's in the file section of the group. Um, Charlie says, yeah, so on the main page of the hub, there are beginner hobbyists aspiring. Yeah, those buttons, I, I did explain this in the Start Here video, so I don't know if you guys have seen that. Um, but in the Start Here video, I've explained um, that what's working at the moment and that we are developing the hub and the roadmap and the resource button was just added three weeks ago and we're working behind the scenes to fill all those out so we'll notify you when they're ready um, but if you haven't seen the start here video I'd, I'd go and watch that it's inside the hub the big button at the top um, because that gives you an overview of what's happening inside the hub and how to use things. Um, this is a good question. Does it devalue your paintings to sell prints or cards? I find that people like to buy cheaper prints, but perhaps if that option wasn't there, they would have bought the original. So, um, I, it really does depend. <laughs> so it's so elusive, all this stuff. Because, you know, let's take Drew Brophy as an example. He sells prints, and by selling prints of his originals, the originals have gone up significantly in value. Because the prints have become so popular and his images have become iconic, the artwork, the originals, have gone through the roof in terms of their value because everyone wants to own the original. So 
that's one way of looking at it. It, it it's that that original becomes more so after. And I found this, you know, I've I've actually bought original pieces before where I know and this is a bit egotistical now, <laughs> but this is how humans work. Like I've bought an original because I know there's print and I want the original. You know, I didn't want the print. I wanted the original artwork. And it's nice for me to know that there are prints out there and I have the original one. There's something really nice about that and prepared to pay the extras. So I, I think that there will be people in your world that maybe can't afford your originals yet. So it's nice to have the option for them to buy prints. It, it brings people in to your world and then people who bought from you are highly likely to buy from you again. And what you'll find is when people like you and you're consistent, they will end up buying another piece and another piece. It happens. People mm -hmm. tend to come back because they want another piece to complement the other one or they like what you sell. You know, maybe they're buying them for gifts for their friends and they'll just come back and buy another one. So I think that in your hierarchy, your pricing hierarchy, you should have an entry level, a mid level and a high level. Um, and that creates the option for those people who are a little bit nervous about buying a high ticket item from you to come in at that level. And then, you know, you never know, they might end up paying for the higher one. Or what it does is it creates that perception of people who want the original because they don't want the prints. So it gives you that nice, I'll talk more about this in selling next month. You know, it is all selling is all about psychology um, and triggering the brain and these perceptions. So it's not about being sleazy and having these sleazy tactics. It's, you know, there are things that we can do to show the value of something and actually having your entry price points against your higher price points shows the value of that artwork and makes it more desirable. Um, so and equally the other way around when you've got that higher price point compared to your entry price point all of a sudden that seems very very good value so our, Sharon has found this you know her, her work is in the thousands her entry price point now is 150 pounds and that seems amazing value you know because her work is the bigger pieces are in the thousands and it's that perception now. So people feel like they're getting an absolute bargain by spending 150 pounds on a tiny sculpture because her other works are a thousand, a thousand. So it gives you that, um, you know, this is the way the brain works when people are choosing to buy and comparis comparisons. And there'll be some people that just want the high end stuff, you know, they want the original, they want the exclusivity of having that one piece that costs a lot of money. So. Oh, thanks, Jane, for letting people know it's the plan, but it's not done yet. Yeah, <laughs> it's the work in progress. Oh, Melissa has a market I'm attending on Saturday, so please wish me luck and send good vibes. I really have to get to bed now, so good night. Oh, bless you. We're sending you all the vibes, the hub vibes. Right, I'm going to wrap up now because I've just noticed the time. Oh, Sophia says, yeah, I find the SEO helpful for keywords as my artworks are on products for Redbubble. That's a great example of when it does work. Yeah, if you've got products and you're driving people on SEO and people come up in the Google search um, and they're being driven to Redbubble, that's a great example. Um, yeah, it just depends, yes, on whether your people are searching or whether it's more coming from social media, which you'll learn inside the hub. You might not know the answers yet. And yeah, Helen says that's true about the portrait. It comes from, uh, my latest commission came from a friend. Yeah, I think t commissions and things like that do tend to come from building relationships and people getting to know you because it's a it's the fear thing. You know, when we think about mindset, and again, I'll talk about this in selling next month, but when we talk about mindset, it's also, when we come to selling, we've got to think about the mindset of the customer. And when people are buying, they have fear. People. There are some people that will impulsively buy. They're not scared. They just want stuff. They're in a minority. They're a, they're a, they're a small 
group of people in the grand scheme of things most people have objections they are they have questions they're worried about things before they buy and so we can do so much to alleviate that fear in people so learning about the mindset at the moment from your own point of view is great you'll start to learn about it from the customer point of view as well which will help you convert sales and um it's exciting Yvonne took her printouts on holiday with her. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, whoever this was that wrote this, I am thinking of initially selling work on an online gallery, 30% commission with a wide audience. I'm currently uncomfortable with personal communication. That's fine. If you don't fancy that right now, then that's okay. Um, the one thing to check with the online gallery is, are they advertising you? Are they pushing people to your page? Because with online galleries, I, I find you still have to do some of the marketing and push people there. So just check that. But, you know, in your time in the hub, we can help you with this, doing it in a, in a gentle way. Um, So Kate said, I'm scared of selling my commissions in case I let them down. So that is good to know because shine a light on that. Work on the mindset, the growth and fixed. Get the lessons out, Kate, inside the mem inside the hub. Lesson one, I think it is, the growth and fixed. Because write that down. I'm scared of selling commissions in case I let them down. And then really drill into that. How would you let them down? and drill under it and shine a light on it. And then, because I was scared of this when I set up United Art Space, I was terrified of letting people down and giving the wrong advice. And um, so I had to work on that and shine a light on it and come up with, right, okay, um, how am I gonna let them down? Because I'm scared of, maybe they won't like it, or I'm scared of, um, what if it goes missing in the post and I don't know, you know, all these things, I don't know, they've all, they'll be different and unique to you. It's to drill down on what it is because then you can come up with, right, okay, if I'm scared they won't like it, then I need to address that and say, at three points during our time together, you can review the work and we can feed back to make sure you like it. You come up with the solutions to ease that fear in yourself. And also the growth, it's coming up with the solution and also the growth way of thinking that what if I don't let them down? You know, what if I am gonna be great at commissions? So it's, you know, there's always a, an alternative of what if I let them down, but what if I don't let them down? And, you know, it, when I learn from everyone else inside the community and how to do commissions properly, in fact, Kelly Herrick, um, who's one of our members has identified this as a potential learning curve for people of how to deal with commissions properly. And so she's kindly, well, you know, um, suggested doing a, a little mini lesson showing her process because she's really good at this she's really good at um you know we'll do a deep dive with kelly and she'll show her process because um when you feel confident about that process that you've created then it alleviates that fear so yeah like jane says what would you do if you knew um you couldn't fail it's such a great point what was the question in email you said to send in on what we were seeking from the group? Something to that effect. I will send the email that is not working. But I'm concerned I'm behind because of it. You're not behind on anything, Michelle. There's nothing um, that you've missed out on. So I'm still trying to check off what I have not done yet. So I can have some order moving forward. So tomorrow I will send you a highlights email and that will have everything in that you need to focus on um so don't worry you haven't missed anything um someone's saying they can't see the button so right at the top i can't show it from here because i'm live but if you go to the comments at the top and press show more, there'll be a link at the bottom that you press. 
Okay. Um, I will see if I can screenshot it after this and post it in afterwards because I can't put pictures in here right now. Uh, okay, so Angie says you have to come out of the video, but I didn't know that and see it. And then the link's there. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, Michelle saying, do you need information for me to be in a group of interest? No, we're not doing the groups yet, Michelle. The groups will be the end of next month. So don't worry, there's, there's nothing that you've missed out on. Um, we've put two polls inside the group that are in the announcement section to see what kind of art you make and where you're, um, you know, what stage you're at. So that's all that we've done so far. And then, yeah, don't worry, we will be doing groups in the future, but we, we're not doing that until the end of next month because we need people to settle in first and then we'll decide what way to split people. So you haven't missed anything, don't worry. And then tomorrow, look out for the highlights email where I just break everything down and then that's the main stuff that you need to focus on. So, uh, why is reviewing the website a privilege for, for only older members? So, basically, um, last month I said that I would review the websites. This was before we had new members. And I created a post and I said, I said to the members that I would review their websites and created a link and they put the link and I had, they had a deadline and it had to be in by that date. And because of the workshops, I didn't get a chance to do those reviews for them. So they've been patiently waiting very kindly. And so I will be reviewing those next week. But I have 35 people to review. So there is just no time to add any extra people onto that list. So it will be help. And what I find is when I review the websites and it will be a quick review of the home page and just seeing if the message is clear and the buttons are clear, that's what I'll be doing for each person. So it's really just making sure that it's really obvious what the website is and what kind of artist you are and where I go. And what you'll find is then the feedback is the same for everyone. Um, so you'll watch a few of those feedback sessions and you'll learn what you need to do for your own website. So um, it, that's what I find when I do these sessions, the feedback ends up just being the same <laughs> for everyone, <laughs> um, with some differences, of course. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'll be doing. And then, you know, in the future, um, I will be doing, because I can't review every single person inside the hub. Um, if people want me to review one-on-one, -on -one, you can pay extra to have reviews of websites and social media. And then what we'll be doing in future is um, thinking of a way of we'll, we'll be selecting people and I'll be doing reviews just with a few people each month just to go deeper on certain things. So we're just figuring out how we will work that. Um, but yeah, I can't offer reviews for every single person. Um, it's impossible. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's why I've opened up one-to-ones if people want to book one-to-one -one and have that extra feedback. So that's that's the reason. Um, okay, I'm going to head now. Um, I don't think there's anything else. And I will see you all tomorrow. So I'm um, sorry, just checking to see if there's anything else coming in. So yes, I'll be, there'll be a watch party this evening, which is a complete replay of this video. And then tomorrow, I've sent the links out, there'll be a studio session tomorrow as well. So happy Thursday, everyone, and I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.